Yes, it's pillow talk time. Hi everyone, welcome to another design lesson video. In each video, I'm going to review some key design principles that you should keep in mind when you're thinking about renovating or decorating your space. So if you have a design dilemma and need some answers, feel free to comment in the section below with your questions, or you can tweet me your questions on Twitter at designchicky. Your dilemma could become one of these design lesson videos right here. In the meantime, let's get to today's topic. Pillows, toss cushions, whatever you call them, they're kind of a must have when it comes time to complete the look of your living room. It's part of accessorizing. Also, do you chop your pillows? My thoughts on this topic a little later on. So many of my clients have a slightly panicked look on their faces when I bring up pillows. So let's get some things right out in the open. Yes, it's pillow talk time. The first thing to consider is what these pillows are for. This will help you determine so many things like the cost of the pillows, the type of pillow insert, the type of fabric, and even the texture of the fabric. Let's talk about inserts first. For instance, if you just need something decorative where they'll just sit in place and look pretty, then you can save on costs and buy polyester inserts. I really wouldn't use them on your sofa where you'll be sitting on them or resting your head on them because the polyester will definitely not hold its shape for very long. You'll end up with flat pillows, which is not what you want. I don't mind using polyester inserts in pillows that decorate your bed, for instance. They're the type of pillow you move aside before you get in but they really don't have much support or spring back once they've been crushed. So I'd say stay away from them for your sofa. Usually I opt for a down feather filled insert. They are super comfortable and most importantly, they are denser and heavier and can be fluffed back to a fuller shape after they've been used, which means you'll have fuller, fluffier looking pillows for a long time. You can opt for a ratio of 25% down and 75% feather filled, or you can save some money and go to a 5% down and 95% feather filled pillow insert. If you're allergic, then there are some great down alternatives that are dense and can be fluffed up too. See below for my links. Down filled pillow inserts are not inexpensive, but they are a great investment. Raid your home goods store for great deals on good quality pillows where you can keep the inserts and just replace the pillowcases. Next up is sizing and quantity. I like pillows on sofas and beds that have a layered look, which means I like having toss cushions of various sizes. A classic layered look is to have a larger 22 inch square cushion and then a 20 inch square cushion sit in front. And I usually like to place this combination on each end of the sofa. I also love adding what's known as a lumbar type pillow, which is usually a rectangular shape like 12 inches by 24 in front of that combination, but only at one end of the sofa. You want a little bit of asymmetry. That lumbar pillow could be placed in the middle of the sofa too on its own, if there's enough space between the ends. I'm not a huge fan of having three square shaped pillows in a row like this, where there's one large, then medium, then small, like a cascade of pillows. I find that's too much repetition and it gets a little predictable and boring. That's sort of the opposite of the lumbar pillow. It's kind of unexpected and interesting. For sofas, I also prefer to limit my pillow so that you can actually see the sofa. This sort of look with all the pillows lined up across makes it awkward for you or your guests to sit without having to remove pillows. And pillows are expensive, so do you really want them lying around on the ground? So I like having an odd number of pillows. For sofas, I like five pillows, two on either end with one additional lumbar pillow for that extra bit of interest. For smaller two-seater sofas, I'm up for three pillows, one at one end and two at the opposite end. This unbalanced look adds interest too. For sectionals, I prefer to add a couple of pillows to the corner as well. For beds, I like having a decorative pillow sit in front of a European pillow sham. The sham hides your actual sleeping pillow, and then the extra little touch of a decorative pillow in front of each sham adds an opportunity for extra color or pattern in your bedroom. Make sure those decorative pillows are smaller than your pillow shams for that layered look. I also love adding a lumbar pillow in the middle or a bolster type pillow like this. And then there are all the little design details. 
You can have pillows with tassels on the corners or beautiful trims around the edges or fabric with textures. All of these details add to the look of the pillow but may detract you from actually using the pillow. So keep them in mind. I love the look of an exposed zipper. This gold zipper paired with a pale lavender velvet is stunning. But if you're intending on resting your head on this particular pillow, then both the exposed zipper and the velvet may not be the best choice. But I love it anyways. And finally, the number one question I know you're dying to know the answer to. To chop or not to chop? Designers are known for chopping pillows, I think. When I'm styling a home, you'll find me karate chopping my pillows for sure. Here's what I mean. These square pillows have been chopped. And here, they're not chopped. See the difference? I kind of like them chopped. I feel like they look heavier and fuller for some reason. It's hard to chop them properly if the inserts are not good quality inserts. You really don't get that look with polyester inserts. Another reason to invest in good inserts. So here's your takeaway. Toss cushions are the finishing touches to creating a comfortable, finished interior when it comes to living rooms and bedrooms. They add color, texture, and layers to the room. Start with a good quality insert, size and group them accordingly, keeping odd numbers in mind, and decorative details to make them even more decorative. And finally, to chop or not to chop, that's totally up to you. Thanks for watching my latest design lesson video. If you like this video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well, where I always post tidbits of all the real life design projects I'm working on. And if you have any design questions, let me know in the comments below, and it could be the topic of our next video. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. But really, it's totally up to you. If you don't want to chop your pillows, I'm okay with it.